Right, so now we've got Saphir open and we can see the history plot, so let me maximize this. So we can see the pressure and the gas rate versus time. So we start producing the wire at about 10,000 and then went up, as we increase the drawdown, went up to about 25, 24, 25 and we've got a series of rate at about so 25 million standard period fit value. If you look at the drawdown, the drawdown is quite huge. So we've got about 5,000 PSI drawdown to produce a 25 million standard cubic feet per day. So we know that the well is, doesn't have great productivity here, just by looking at this plot. And probably permeability in the reservoir is quite small, and the, the skin may be quite high as well. We can see as well, looking at the drawdown, producing at the same 25 million standard cubic feet per day, that we are increasing the drawdown over time. So maybe the skin is increasing as well over time. So the next step I'm going to do is I'm going to have a look at the log plot or the derivative plot and I'm going to overlay different PPUs. So how to do this, I'm going to minimize that and I'm going to, do, I'm going to go on Extract DP. I'm going to click on this. I've got only one gauge and I can select a particular PPU uh, with the drop down menu, or I can go on the list and tick on the on some particular PPU, etc. I prefer to work with display, so I'm going to cl click on this cross here and I can just select the PPUs I want to see with a left click, and now they're going to be highlighted in blue like this. And I can click on OK, just going to select, let's just select the, the last three ones. Click on OK. Here we go. So what I see now is three plots. I've got the log log plot or derivative plot showing the we've got the gas condensate now, so it's pseudo pressure. Kappa call it gas potential. It's about the same. And versus time. So this is versus the shutting duration. So I'm plotting three PBUs. You can see them here and uh, with the code color. So I've got a pink one, an orange, and a green. So I'm plotting all of them, I can maximize that. You can see the green, the orange, and the pink. And I'm plotting that for each versus the shooting duration delta t here. Okay. And so what we've got is delta p, which is this pressure signal. Okay, pressure t during the PBU minus pressure at shutting. Okay, this pressure signal. And this plot here is the derivative of delta p or the PBU pressure, it's the same, with respect to the superposition time. And we plot this versus the shutting duration delta t for each PBU. Then I've got the semi-log plot, or more commonly called superposition plot, which plots the pressure of pseudo pressure, this is gas condensate, so we are using pseudo pressure, versus the superposition time. So this is a bit of the inverse compared to pi. Uh, superposition time are negative and so we should look from the left towards the right. Okay, so as the shutting duration increases, we should look towards the right. And when we reach zero on the right side of the plot, this is infinite shutting time. And then we've got the history plot or the data plot, which is showing the pressure and the gas rate versus time. Before we continue, in general on the superposition plot, what's going to happen is that this plot is rate normalized. Okay? I prefer to remove this rate normalized for the superposition plot and to have a look how the superposition plot behaves for the different PBUs. Okay, so let's have a look at the log log plot now. This is plotting pressure and the derivative, or in the gas or gas condensate case, uh, the gas potential or the pseudo pressure, versus the shutting duration. And now we've got different PBUs here. And the first observation that we can make is that these PBUs are very consistent. They are tracking each other. So they show a one unit slope straight line and a large hump. So this is an indicative of well bore storage, the unit slope straight line. The hump, that's indicative of a large skin. You can see the separation between the two plots is quite significant as well. 
We've got maybe a short stabilization around 10 hours. This stabilization is probably indicative of radial flow regime in the horizontal plane. Okay, so circular flow towards the wall. And then we've got an increase in the derivative, and this increase is probably due to the presence of boundaries. Okay, and we can see that the shooting duration lasts quite long, about 2,000, almost 2,000 hours. Okay, so this is log scale again, so now I've got 1,000, 2,000 here, 3,000, 4,000, etc. Right, you can see that you've got this dashed line um, in Sapphire, and so this is to spot the unit slope straight line, the wall bore storage, and this horizontal line is to spot the rider flow regime. And if you maintain your left click while moving these two lines, you can see on the left bottom corner in yellow, you can either fix one or the other line pressing Ctrl or Shift. So I'm going to select the stabilization line at this level. Okay, we assume that this short stabilization around 10 hours, that we assume that that is radio flow regime. So I'm selecting, I'm placing my stabilization line here, and then I'm selecting my unit substrate line on the left that I'm doing here. As soon as I place this line here, I've got access to KH, the permeability times the net reservoir thickness. And with this unit slope straight line, I've got access to the wall bore storage coefficient. That's commonly uh, written as the letter C. And this is equal to the compressibility of the fluid times the volume that the fluid connects. I can see the results here with this small icon, like this with a small window, or I can show the results directly on the plot, which is my preference. So as soon as I place this line here, I've got a cage of about 450 millidarc feet and an average permeability of 2.5 millidarc. So Safia calculates cage, and based on the net reservoir thickness that I input in the program, in this particular file, now it shows the permeability of 2.5. With the well bore storage coefficient C equal to 0.1 bars per PSI. Right, so we did the derivative overlay. We plot on the same derivative plot the different PBUs. Why do we do this? This gives us some confidence in the data. We can QC the response, and it's also easier for us to identify the different shapes on the derivative. Okay, so to identify the different flow regimes in this wall and reservoir response. Okay, so now it's time to push the analysis a bit further. We're going to select an interpretation model, and we're going to try to match this response. That's going to give us the calculated wall and reservoir parameters. So I click on model. I'm going to select an interpretation model. And I can see two tab, analytical or numerical. For this session, we're just going to focus on analytical. I can select standard model, or I can select the changing well model. I'm just going to use standard model, the simplest one. Constant well bore storage for the well bore model. Uh, we recommend it only to use constant well bore storage. There is really not very much use in selecting and changing storage. Okay. In this particular case, the wall bar storage is not changing over time. You can see a clear unit slope straight line. If you see sometimes some deviation of this unit slope straight line, then you could select a changing storage. But in practice, it doesn't help too much. Wall model, you've got different wall bar model. You can use vertical wall, which is the case here. And then you've got the boundary model. So you've got the infinite acting, no boundaries got one fold, a leaky fold, we don't tend to use that one too much, a circle, which is a closed reservoir, parallel folds, in pi we, we call it a channel, intersecting folds, intersecting folds for any angles, and rectangle, so that's closed reservoir, like circle. So in our case, this could follow unit of straight line, so we're going to select, just to start with, a parallel fold. 
For the parameter estimate to start with, we selected already the wild ball storage, that's 0.1. The skin we can leave it to 0. Initial pressure we can, so when we've got the cell in grey, that means we cannot change this number. But if you click on Impose PI, then you can change it, let's say like this, for example. We'll write 7500 PSI. Cage, we've got 450 mRC, so that's good enough. And for the boundaries, so that's the south and the north, it's a no flow boundary, okay, so ceiling. We've got as, as well the constant pressure. We don't recommend you to use the constant pressure uh, boundary model. Nowadays, instead of using the constant pressure model, you should use the linear composite model. Okay, so we can provide some estimates for this distance from the boundaries to the wall, clicking on the small cross. And now it says that we need to pick the time of deviation from the stabilization. So something around here, and the same for this one, around here, like this. And then we can click on Generate. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do, because we've got a lot of plots here, I'm going to minimize this one, and I'm only going to focus on the final PB. Okay, because we've got three plots in one, and just for clarity for you folks, I'm going to remove the two other PBUs. So how, how I am doing this, I, I clicked on Extract DP, then on this small cross here, go, kind of change that. On the small cross here, and then I can just click on the PBU to remove this blue zone here. Smoothing coefficient, we strongly recommend, we haven't said that, but we strongly recommend to use a smoothing coefficient of zero. By default, I think on uh, Sapphire sometimes you use 0 0.1, and by trying to smooth the derivative, there is a risk that you introduce some artificial features on the derivative. As well, if you smooth the derivative response, you may not realize that you've got some data issues, that you've got some noise, or that you've got some uh, changing fluid densities, etc. With uh, a smoothing coefficient, let's say, of 0 0.1, sometimes you might not see the tidal effects. So, the tidal effects, this is the impact of the tides during the operation, and at the end of your PBU, or at the end of your derivative, what you might spot is some uh, oscillations like this. And these oscillations are due to the tides. If you look at your PBU, you will see some oscillations as well with a frequency of about 12 hours, 12 to 24 hours. And you want to make sure that you spot this because this is going to mask your pressure tangent response. So you need to correct for the tide. And to spot this, well, you need first a smoothing coefficient of zero. And I can see only one response now, which is this PVU here highlighted in blue. Right, so let's go back to my derivative plot. I've got my simulation now for my interpretation model. This is the one. And so I can try to match this manually by changing the parameters here. So I don't want to change cage. Cage, I fixed this one with my horizontal line. I don't want to change my wall ball storage coefficient. I fix it with my uni slope straight line. So what I'm going to do first is always to work with the derivative. Don't mind the delta p plot. This is just a matter of the skin. You can do this at the end. So I'm going to bring this line here, which represents the boundaries, towards the left. So when I say towards the left, I mean towards earlier time, or earlier delta t. We saw as the third rule, or the third golden statement, that delta t is related to the radius from the wall. So as I try to move this line towards smaller delta t, or earlier time, that means I want to bring the boundaries closer to the wall. So, I'm going to reduce that, let's say, to 300, plus 1. And now it's quite good. I was lucky on this one. And so, I can match the, the start of the deviation on the derivative, but I need to bring this now 
towards the right. So towards later time, so I need to increase the distance from the boundary to the wall. Okay, so I need to increase the second boundary now. So let's say 550, like this, generate. Right, now, now it's better, so I'm happy with this. So the final thing is that I need to increase the distance between the two plots. I need to push this delta p upwards, so I need to increase the skin. So let's say 10, well, I think 10 was too small. So let's say 15. Okay, getting better, but maybe 20. Uh, almost there, 21. It's gonna be maybe too much, uh, 21, yeah, that looks good. Right, so I'm quite happy about this match. Um, if you look at the parameters, you've got initial pressure. But with the derivative plot or the logler plot, you cannot use this plot to, to get the initial pressure. Okay, so we will have to use the other plot for this one. So I minimize this one. I'm going to go on the superposition plot. And we can see that my model in red now doesn't match the actual data. And if you look at it, it looked a bit shift upwards. Okay. And this is some evidence that my initial pressure is too high and needs to be reduced. Right, so let's go on my model and let's decrease this initial pressure to let's say 7400 PSI. That's slightly better, but we are not there yet. So maybe 73. Okay, that wasn't too bad, we are matching this, but again, this is not too important. What we want to match is the rider flow regime, you know, and the boundaries. So this is this portion of the data, okay? This is the wall bore storage. This is this part here. We are not too interested on this one. The most important is to match this part of the plot, which is this one. So I'm going to slightly decrease it again to, let's say... 7200 PSI. Okay, that might be a bit too low, so let's do a quick zoom here. And maybe I want to increase that a little bit to 7200. Yeah, that, that works well. Um, I'm quite happy about this match now. So let's set zoom like this. So we match the derivative plot. The superposition plot helps us with the initial pressure and it's also a verification plot. We make sure that um, simulation match the data. And now we can have a look at the data plot or the history plot. So now we need to make sure that the PBUs are matched. And this one is matched here. If the PPUs are not matched, that could mean that our initial pressure is not correct, that our cage, our permeability thickness is not correct, that we need to add or remove some boundaries, or that we need to add or remove some changes in the reservoir properties further away from the wall. So we might have a bit of an issue here, but we're just going to stop at this point for this session. We're going to see this issue later on in the second session called Deconvolution.